Well, good morning, everybody. Great to see everybody here. My name is uh, Brian Mosley. I almost forgot my name there for a second. My name is Brian Mosley, and uh, this is my lovely wife, Ashley. Everybody say hi, Ashley. So it's great to be here, and we're kind of going to tag team the message here today because we want to talk to you just for a few minutes about relationships, and specifically the power and the importance of being a part of what we call here at our church life groups, okay? So we're going to talk about that for just a moment, but um, the reason we wanted to actually spend some time just focusing on this today, one is because uh, we're starting a brand new life group semester. In in our church, we have three semesters uh, of life groups, and right now, this week, we start our summer semester, which goes from June and July, okay? And then we take the month of August off, and then we continue from September through the first part of December. It's fantastic. And so the, those times that we have built in for our uh, life group semesters are just good, and there's breaks built in there so that we can rest, uh, we can renew our, uh, our, our strength and have training in there. Uh, but we're excited today to launch this summer semester of our life group. Anybody already plugged in? To a life group. Okay, all right. Praise God for you. And maybe you're here today, and maybe you haven't uh, gotten plugged into a life group yet. Maybe you've been thinking about it. I want you to just lean into this message for the next few minutes and really, really try to grasp and understand what we're trying to communicate from God's word about the power of being a part of a community of of believers, a life group. Hey, babe. Hey. Hi, (laughs) y'all. Hey, I have something really cool to share with you. Um, It was five years ago today that we packed up three little boys in our minivan, and the whole back of the minivan was full of the rest of our stuff. We had three car seats that we crammed into the middle section of that minivan, Um, to leave Tennessee for the last time to drive out to Las Vegas. And it is so cool, five years later, to sit up here and look at all of you amazing people and just celebrate what God has done. And it's so fitting that we are talking about life groups today because when we set out to come out here, we knew no one And in church planting, um, they'll say a lot of people, or there's words and terms they use. And in church planting, they'll say, um, like, you parachuted in. And that's basically what we did to Vegas. We came to Vegas in obedience to the Lord, knowing no one. And we brought no team with us. I was praying that there were people from Tennessee that would want to come with us. But nobody came with us. That was not not God's plan or design. And it's amazing, Um, just this whole weekend, as I have been reflecting on five years, um, how beautiful that is. And I know that we have some people in our congregation that are transitioning for the Air Force or transitioning to other states for ministry callings, and um, I'm excited for them. I hate letting people go just as much as anybody else. But if I had stayed in Tennessee we would not have experienced what we've experienced here in Vegas and the friends and the community that we've made here in this city. Um, And I want our friends that are leaving to go and do ministry elsewhere, whatever avenue God is taking them on to experience that same thing. And a lot of it comes because of life groups and making yourself vulnerable and getting to know people. And so we're going to talk about that today. But before we get started, why don't we pray? Pray us in. And um, Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for today. And I thank you for what this day means for Brian and me and our family. And God, I thank you for every person that is sitting in this congregation right now. And those that can't be here with us today, I thank you for bringing them into our life. God, I thank you for making our life richer because of them and linking arms as brothers and sisters in Christ. And Lord, we ask you just Don't let our words be our words today, but let them be yours. Speak through us as we are sharing your heart with your congregation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah, throughout the years, we've actually been a part of several life groups, Uh, a couple of them in Tennessee. Uh, We were a part of a a group of um, 
uh, adults, and it was just a beautiful time. I remember they taught us about, you know, anybody ever done the Dave Ramsey managing your money kind of stuff, getting out of debt stuff? We went through that as a life group, and it just impacted us and gave us so much uh, wisdom just as a young couple. And I really value that. And as, as a, uh, uh, a young man, well, I used to be young. Now I'm 40, <laughs> so I'm kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm getting a little older. But, uh, but I value the wisdom. You know, I value being a part of a group with older, more experienced people who have been there around the block a time or two and that can speak to me and say, hey, here's some things that I've learned when I was your age or here's some things that I wish I had learned when I was your age. And just that impartation of knowledge and wisdom, such a valuable thing uh, to be a part of a life group and, and receive that wisdom and knowledge. Uh, I remember we were... We were um, on, no, we weren't on staff at uh, City Church just yet, but the pastor of that church was leading a discipleship group called Lead Like Jesus. And he was talking about how you know, he, he just wanted to impart into the leaders or emerging leaders of his church. He was talking about how important it was not to be a leader like the world leads, but we lead because out of servant hearts. And this is how we lead it. But that was one of the most impactful life groups or discipleship groups that I've ever been a part of. And it has impacted me tremendously. Uh, but just that invitation from my pastor to, hey, be a part of this community. Be a part of this group where I want to intentionally pour into you, develop you, in, invest in you. It meant the world to me. And so there have been times like that. Yeah. Uh, when when life groups have just played such an important role in our lives. Yeah. And I love in all of those life groups that we had been in, um, I was even in a women's um, only life group. And in all of these life groups, there were people of different ages and stages in their walk with the Lord in these life groups. And that was incredibly important. Um, the women's life group that I was in, I had the youngest children. The ladies in this group had children from teenage years down to elementary years, and I had babies. Like, they threw baby showers for me. Um, they brought meals after we had babies, and they were the people that I went to when I'm like, what is this? <laughs> what, what has happened? And I still, like, those ladies are still my friends, and their children are married. Some of them have children now. They're in college high school, some middle schoolers, and now that I have um, a preteen, I'm going, what is this? And they are still, <laughs> they are still there for me, and that is amazing, and that's um, something that we have experienced in any life group that we have been in, just the different stages of, of maturity in the Lord, different phases in life, and how everyone just pours in to, you have, you have things to offer, and you have things to receive, in a yeah. life group. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So life groups, if you're taking notes with us, we want to give you just a few notes and scriptures to look at in, in, as, as it relates to relationships and life groups. I want you to jot these down if you're taking notes with us because life groups provide us, really, there could be more, but we're just going to name three important things, okay? So life groups provide, number one, a place to connect. A place to connect with other people with other brothers, with other sisters. Uh, it says in Romans chapter 12, verse 5, in the same way, we are many, but in Christ, we are all one body, right? Each one is a, is a part of that body, and each part belongs to the other parts. So it's so important that we, as members of Christ's body, as brothers and sisters in the Lord, that we connect you know, I just like to explain it like this. We are like uh, Legos. Mm -hmm. We are, people are like Legos. The body of Christ is like Legos. We are designed to do what? Connect. To connect. And so when we're not connected, when we're isolated, we're just off in the toy box by ourselves, it's not a good place to be. And it's not what we were designed to be. We're designed to connect with each other. Yeah. Isolation can be very dangerous. Um, when you isolate yourself from others, at times you're giving the enemy a free spot to speak to you. 
Mm -hmm. It's good to stay connected with believers. Now, believe me, I understand. Um, I am married to the king of introverts. Amen. Um, <laughs> he recharges at home by himself. Um, I recharge being around a group of people. After he's around a group of people, <laughs> he needs to go home and be by himself. Right. When I'm home by myself, I want to be around a group of people. That's okay. That is exactly how God made him. And I'm exactly the way that God made me. But there is also a balance. And it's good because if he's at home alone all the time, just him and his thoughts, sometimes those are going to get pretty dicey. If he's struggling with something and he is not ever going to anyone, to believers, to other men in Christ and saying, I'm struggling with this, and he struggles alone, that's a dangerous place to be. It's really good when we can connect with people and we let our hair down and people like us anyway. And people are there to encourage us when we can't stand on our own two feet and then somebody pulls up a scripture because we are going through whatever we're going through and they pull out a scripture. It's just that iron sharpening iron. And so it's good to stay connected like those Legos. Absolutely. So, And then number two, life groups provide a a place to protect, okay, a place to protect. And what I mean by that is that who's got your back, yep. right? Who's protecting you? Who's looking out for you? Who's praying for you? Who's discipling you? Who's investing and mentoring you? Mm -hmm. It's a place for protection for one another. It says this in 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. We know what real love is because Christ gave up his life for us. And so, we also ought to give up our lives for our Christian brothers and sisters. What is that? It's protecting. It's serving. It's loving one another. And this is one of the key elements of what a small group does for us. So, it's a place to connect. It's a place to protect your brothers and sisters in the Lord. And then thirdly, it's a place to grow. And as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another from Proverbs 27, 17. And I just want to speak to both of these, protect and grow. And some of you have heard this story before, but it bears repeating because it was a big impact on my life. And this is what life groups are about. My um, ladies' life group in Tennessee, I was incredibly quiet and intimidated. Um, I know that's hard to believe. Uh, but that was the stage of life that I was in. And these ladies had already all been friends. And I was coming into kind of their friendship, and I really didn't know how that was going to play out, but they had invited me to join their group. And then everybody, as always, has different personalities, and I remember my sweet friend Deanne has a very vibrant, and um, she's a good leader personality, and I was kind of afraid of her a little bit, and I didn't know if we were going to really be able to be friends but um, I stuck with this life group, and Deanne got to know me, and I got to know her, and just one of our biggest cheer cheerleaders, and um, I don't know, maybe a year or two after we moved here, I was just going through a really hard time, and she could just kind of tell. I didn't say anything. I didn't tell her or the other um, girls from that life group really what I was going through, but I was just really kind of down and out, and um, Deanne calls my mother-in-law and says, I'm going to need you to pick me up at the airport because I'm coming to see Ashley. And I, I remember it was a Monday, and I was laying on my couch with a migraine, and there was a knock at my door, and um, the boys opened the door, and they said, what are you doing here? And I got up, and there is Deanne. And I'm like, what are you doing here? And she said, I just came to give you a hug. And so she came all the way from Tennessee to give me a hug, and then she spent the next few days pouring into me, asking me some hard questions, asking me where I was at spiritually. That is a good friend. That is not somebody that's trying to hurt my feelings. That is a good friend that wants me to grow. And so she took that time. And I know not everyone is able to do that, but that one small act was huge for me. It doesn't have to be you getting on a plane and going somewhere. It can be as simple as a text message. Hey, I'm thinking about you today. How can I pray with you? That is huge. 
and makes a world of difference. I felt so revived after time with my sister in Christ and her praying over me and loving on me. It made such a profound impact on my life. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I understand like um, some of the most strengthening times in, in my life is like when I'm able to sit down with a, with a brother with a, even another pastor like Adam or Rory or some of the other people in our church where I can say to, my, to them, just, I'm going through this, or I need some prayers for this, or I don't understand this. Can we, can we talk about it? Can we study it out through Scripture? And I remember every time when I would leave those kinds of conversations and those times of, with other men in Christ and, and just make myself vulnerable. How many of you know it's, it's, it's hard sometimes for men to admit, hey, I need some help. Hey, I'm going through something. Hey, because we like to be manly men and just go through it by ourselves because we're all that, right? And, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, hear some, I hear some men grunts out there, okay? Uh, but when we take that time and when we admit, hey, I'm going through this, I need some help, and we talk it out with a brother, um, men, uh, let me encourage you to do that, man. You've got to be open. You Let your walls down and in, 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 uh, uh, have those honest conversations with one another because I'm, I'm just telling you very honestly, there are times when I will go into those conversations feeling really down and out, but I will leave those conversations feeling strengthened. And I feeling strengthened. am going to yeah. piggyback <laughs> off of you. Um, man, I'm just going to speak to you right now. Your wife will absolutely enjoy and feel at peace um, and safe when you do that. Because when I have watched him, and I know he's going through a struggle, and I know that he has reached out to another man of God and sought wisdom, sought prayer from them, that is a security thing for me. Because I don't want him to suffer alone. And when we're in it together, we might just start suffering together. <laughs> But when he is able to go and get another perspective outside of what we are in, that is such security for me. And men, your wives want to feel secure. That's how we were designed. Um, and so it's, I love it. I love it when he does that and he chooses not to go through something alone. That's right. Uh, so let's talk about some of the common roadblocks that we all face. Roadblocks as far as we want to get in relationships. We want to join life groups, but there's things in the way. There's obstacles. There's hindrances. We thought about this as we were uh, preparing this message, and we thought about five maybe common roadblocks. So here they are if you're taking notes, and these are just our thoughts. There's, there's probably thousands more. Uh, but number one is fear. Just fear of uh, belonging, fear of commitment, fear of being exposed, like you're, you don't have it all together or you're, you're not perfect in some way. Um, it's just that kind of fear. And then number two is uh, time. Number two is time. Is I have no time to add one more thing to my already hectic schedule, right? It's, uh, it's time. Even, it's even harder sometimes to give time than it is to give money, right? When we talk about stewarding our lives and, and managing well the things that God has entrusted to us, my friends, it's hard to give time sometimes uh, because it, it, can, it can hurt, and it's a huge investment. It is. Time is a huge investment. Um, the third thing is vulnerability. Will people like me? I know that I, that I struggle with that. Will people like me when they see the real me? When I lay those walls down, when I take the mask off, will they like me? Mm -hmm. Will they accept me or are they going to reject me? Because the world is rejecting me. The world says it doesn't like me. Will these Christians in this small group, will they like me? Or are they going to reject me when they hear my junk? And I'm telling you all from personal experience with my ladies' small group in Tennessee, that is exactly one of the biggest fears that I had because I was going through that really difficult season of stretching, and I say that I bled all over them. Um, I, I seemed like it was always me that had some sort of problem that I was working through. In my life, I had a lot of heavy things that I was trying to work through, 
And I'm like, I'm going to go to them one more time with one more thing. But guess what? They were always there, and they never rejected me. And I remember not long ago when Deanne called me up, and she was crying. And she's like, I'm so sorry to cry all over you. I'm like, listen, you've caught an ocean of my tears. It is my turn to catch your tears. And so I understand that. If I'm vulnerable, will they like me? Well, they accept me. Yeah, and when the, when some people ask me, like, they're, they're so scared of being vulnerable, and it's almost like, uh, what is life group going to be like? Is it going to be like this circle of people, and you're going to sit me in the middle, and you're going to make me confess all of my sins, and then you're going <laughs> to cast the, cast the devil out of me? Well, no, that's not what life group is all about, because guess what? We all have issues. <laughs> We all have struggles. We all have stuff. And so just because I'm vulnerable, it, it should make you free to be vulnerable too. There is no one judging. There's no one condemning. We're all in the same boat. We're all doing this thing together. We all have stuff. Hey, and guess what? It's awkward for all of us. Yes. <laughs> Y'all, I'm a train wreck nine times out of ten when I show up to life group. <laughs> We've been... <laughs> we, We've been in the throes of school. My children have probably whined all day long. I show up half the time with my food not even prepared, where I've got to use someone's kitchen to prepare food, and then it might end up being a disaster. Sometimes we show up in yoga pants. It's a beautiful thing. It is absolutely because, and that, I want to encourage you, that takes time to get there. And that takes time and effort and staying with it. You're not going to show up to the first life group meeting and be like, hey, I am here. Got my pajamas on. I didn't make dinner. Here, let me throw some beans from a can onto your stovetop. And you feel completely comfortable doing that. But the more you go, the more you're known, the more you let your hair down, and the more free you are to be yourself. Yeah, and a good friend of ours always says, to be known is, is to, to be, be loved, loved, right? Yes. Anybody ever heard that before around here? Okay. <laughs> to be known is to be loved. So the next roadblock is uh, it's just not that important, right? We don't value it. We don't see the, the true value of getting together in a group like that and sharing relationships yeah. together. I come to church. I do my time, I do my hour and a half, I worship, I sing, I give, I do my thing, but that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. I just don't have time for it. It's a, it's a roadblock. It's a ro and, and the thing is, is like right now when you're looking up here, you're also looking at the back of somebody's head in front of you. Maybe you got here and you got to chat a little bit beforehand. Um, my sweet friend was helping me get through the hall today because I tend to not stop talking and then run in here um, last minutes. And so, but we get here and it's, we come in and we are corporate worship. I love it. And we're listening to a message and I love it. And then we leave and we go to lunch. And sometimes we don't even know the person that's sitting next to us or we got to tell them hi really quick. But when you go to a life group, we say you're in circles. You might be, but you're not. And nobody's trying to cast anything out of you. But you're looking at people. You're getting to sit and commune with them. A lot of our life groups have food. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If Ashley's in your life group, she's going to bring a can of beans to open real fast and throw on the stovetop and say, dinner's done. Um, but you get to eat and you get to talk and you get to know one another. And it takes time, and it takes showing up, but it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay, and then number five, dun, 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 the one that I hear a lot, small groups are too clicky. I don't like them. Guys, I'm going to be very, very honest and very, very vulnerable with you right now. I feel like clicky is a dirty word, and we like to use it because sometimes that's just a really good excuse. I don't want to go because it's too clicky. But the thing is, is the people within a small group are the ones that are showing up week after week. And they're putting in the time to get to know one another. And guess what's going to naturally happen? They're going to naturally develop a relationship. And so, and I guarantee you, if you show up just like I showed up to that one group of girls in Tennessee that were already friends, they're some of my greatest friends in the world. They 
They brought me in. I was awkward and socially awkward and intimidated and insanely shy. There was nothing cool about me where they'd be like, yeah, I want to hang out with her. No, they just loved Jesus and they loved me and they brought me in because I kept showing up even when I didn't want to. Like, it was hard. Like, they're really close to each other, and they were not working moms. They got to hang out and do lunch and, like, have coffee and stuff during the week, and I was a working mom. I didn't get to go do those things. And if I had been in my head, I would have said, I don't belong here. I'm not like them. And I would have missed out on the biggest blessing of these friendships. I kept showing up, and that's what we're asking you to do. Keep showing up. If you go to a life group and you show up for a while and you're you're like, you know what, I'm just, I'm, it's not jiving, it's not clicking. That's okay. Brian and I did that in Tennessee. They were great people. There was just we weren't connected. It was, wasn't where we were supposed to be. So we tried a different life group, and it was great and amazing. And we kept showing up even when we were tired. It was always a midweek thing, but we kept showing up. And they were amazing and poured into us. And so if that's your excuse, they're just too clicky, then I dare you just keep showing up. And you also have to, you can't just show up to receive. You also have to give. You have to offer something. You have to give them a hug, bring some beans and throw it on their stovetop. I'm serious. But show up and Equally give and receive. Yeah. So let's transition now because those are some of the roadblocks. But guess what? Jesus has answers for those things, right? God's word instructs us about those things and helps us to take our next step in obedience to him. So when we look at Jesus himself in the New Testament, we find that he did what? He poured his life into 12 disciples. I just want you to think about that for a moment because most of us, we, we know the message that Jesus brought, right? The message of salvation, the message that the kingdom of God has come near to you. But we forget about his methods. We know his message, but we forget about his methods sometimes. And this is Jesus' method, small groups, Right? He invested into those people. He poured his life into them. He taught them. He prayed with them and for them. He modeled a kingdom lifestyle for them every step of the way. He spent time with them. He was together with them. He, he washed their feet. He taught them how to do it to other, with other people. Jesus did it. He modeled it for us. His method. And so this is one of the truths that I've learned, and I want you to write this down today because it's so important, and it's so important to discipleship, and it's the heartbeat of our church. And it says this, more time with less people equals greater impact for the kingdom of God. This is exactly what Jesus did. This is what he modeled for us, and I believe that with all of my heart. Can we spend more time, not just with the crowds, not just with the big groups, but can we spend more time with a smaller group of people and if we can invest in them intentionally, just like Jesus did, we can expect the kingdom of God to advance like never before. Let's think about the Lego model. Jesus was a Lego with 12 pegs. No more, not thousands of pegs, but he had 12, one for each of his disciples where he connected to. And let's say each one of those disciples had 12 pegs. Jesus was teaching them, this is what you do. And then those disciples discipled other disciples who disciple other disciples. Yes, Jesus taught the masses, but he didn't hang out with them. He didn't spend as much time with them as he did with the 12 And I just have to throw this in there. They ate together. Hallelujah. (laughs) That's right. So we see in the New Testament, especially that Jesus taught a lot about relationships with each other. He taught taught about the priorities of certain things. And jot these down if you're taking notes with me. But one is he taught about the importance of serving one another. Serving one another. In John chapter 13, it says, When he had finished washing their feet... 
He put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. And then in 1 Peter 4, it says, Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. That's right. And so not only serving one another, but number two is this, encouraging one another. How many of you know this life can be tough? It can be hard. We go through things all the time. We need encouragement. We need encouragement. And this is one of the priorities of the body of Christ. This is what Jesus taught. He said this in John uh, 14, do not let your hearts be troubled. In other words, I'm giving you some encouragement right now. Trust in God. Trust also in me. And it says this in Hebrews 3, but encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be, may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. It's so important that we give and we receive encouragement from the body of Christ, from our brothers and from our sisters. Amen? Absolutely. And... Um, just yesterday, one of the girls in my life group is going through an extremely difficult time right now, and she just kind of put out that she's got a very sick puppy, and so um, when she told me that her puppy had parvo, I immediately called her. It's her anniversary weekend, and I called her, and I hear somebody that on her anniversary weekend is bleaching her house and has a puppy in a weekend vet, and we know what that's like. And a heart broken, and I just hear tears. And she just needed somebody to speak to her and speak life into her and to pray over her. I can't fix it. I want to, but I can't. But Jesus can. And just to hear from someone in your moment is so amazing. But you don't always know when somebody's having a moment. So if you feel that kind of like, I need to text that person, do it. That's the Holy Spirit. Get in that habit. Sometimes I know me for sure. I get so busy. Um, Even to a friend this morning, I said, oh, my gosh, I meant to call you the other day and see how things were going because I got so busy. But when we can take time and slow down, right on your bathroom mirror, text a friend today, text some encouragement. It makes a world of difference. That's right. And number three is producing with one another. So it says this in John 15, uh, verse 4. Jesus said, remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Jesus says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. If a man remains in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. It's so wonderful to be a part of a group, a small group of people who are advancing the mission of Jesus together. And we are connected to Jesus. And and we understand that we cannot do anything apart from that connection. So producing with one another is a huge part of being of life in the kingdom of God, of life in the body of Christ. And it says this in Deuteronomy 32. I love this. It says, one man will chase a thousand, but two two put 10,000 to flight. You see the strength with being together, the strength of having that connection and producing with one another. Absolutely. And number four is protecting one another John 16 says, all this I have told you so that you will not go astray. And then looking in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, this is from the message version. It's better to have a partner than go it alone. Share the work, share the wealth. And if one falls down, the other helps. But if there's no one to help, tough. Two in a bed warm each other. Alone, you shiver all night. By yourself, you're unprotected. With a friend, you can face the worst. Can you round up a third? 
a three-stranded rope isn't easily snapped. In other words, we're better together. Two are better than one. Three are better than two. We're stronger together. And I love, love, love um, the imagery of Moses when um, the Israelites are fighting I don't know who, some kind of ites, I'm sure. Um, sorry, I don't remember. I'm being very honest with you guys. Um, and while Moses' hands were up in the air, the Israelites were winning. But when he's tired and his hands fall down, the Israelites begin to lose. And it's a beautiful picture because he's got Aaron over here and her over here. And they begin to hold his arms up when he can't do it on his own. And I've got a sweet friend that she'll call me or text me and she'll say, I need you to be my her right now because I can't do this on my own. I need you to hold me. That's her, that's her cry for, I need you to pray for me right now because I cannot do this on my own. We are better together. That's right. And the last one is this. Uh, Jesus taught the importance of praying together, praying for one another, praying with one another. He said this in uh, John 17. He said, after, after Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and he prayed. He said, I pray for them. I'm not praying for the whole world right now, but I am praying for those you have given me. I just want you to know that I, I counted an honor. Our prayer team and our whole staff counts it an honor just to pray with you. And so when I'm up here and I, and I say things where Pastor Rory says, hey, we've been praying for you this week. I want you to hear that because pray, praying for you is one of the highest ways that I can serve you. It's one of the best things that I can do as your pastor is just to pray for you. So I want you to receive that and I want you to know that as you are a part of this body, you are one of the ones that God has given to us. And I take it very seriously and our leadership team as well that we are praying for you. In James chapter 5, verse 16, it says, Therefore, confess your sins one to the other, and, and do what? Pray for each other so that you may be healed. This is God's plan. This is what he's called us to do as body members. So uh, praying for one another. And Ashley already said it, I, I believe, but it's a, it's a little cliche, but it's, it's, it's just meant to be that way it's to help you remember it. Okay, remember this. We is always better than me. We are better together. We are stronger together. We are wiser together. We make an impact greater when we are together than we could ever do by ourselves. And together is a great place to be this I, one thing that i have noticed about this city is that it is a very transient city it's a hard truth about this city and i have met so many people that they are here by themselves just them and their family grandparents aren't here cousins aren't here there's not family here and what i have watched happen right before my eyes is i have watched friends become family um, even this morning my sweet little Vaughn, if you don't know Vaughn, you need to know sweet little Vaughn. He comes up to me and hands me his baseball card from his little league this year because I'm like Auntie Ashley to him. We're not related by blood other than the blood of Jesus, but he brings this up to me. It's going to go on my refrigerator. He's going to sign this bad boy for me today. I love that. I love that my children have aunts and uncles that are not our brothers and sister. I love that my children have more grandparent figures than just the ones that they were naturally born into. And I feel that I can speak on behalf of those families that are here that don't have any family living in this city. They love it when you love their kids. They love the family that we are building here at the Springs Church. It's so important not to do it alone. We had to do we had to do it alone for, I don't know, four or five months before Nana and Grandpa Mo got here. And that was hard to do it alone. Yeah. So thank you for loving on all the children around here and being 
family together. Yeah, so we want you to just hear loud and clear this morning that life groups are the heartbeat of our church. They are. It's where discipleship happens. It's where strength happens. There's only so much that we can do on a Sunday morning, right? Get in a life group. It's the heartbeat of our church. If you're only participating in our church on a Sunday morning, you're missing out on half of what God is doing in and through this local church. So we want to just leave you with some action steps as we try to wrap, wrap this uh, time up. And so number one, I, w- I want you to encourage you to do this. Find a group. Find a group. In your worship guide today, you received a, um, a little brochure that looks just like this. Just open it up, read it, find out more about our life groups. Look on our website at thespringslv.com. Find our listing of our current groups that are starting this week. And get plugged in. Find a group, okay? And then number two is this, commit for a season. So go ahead and just say, okay, for the months of June and July, I'm committing to this particular group. I may want to change it on down the road, but just for these two months, this is my, this is my group. Yep. These, are, these are my people. And kind of get your, make yourself stubborn. Yeah. Commit. When you commit, say, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to show up every whatever day of the week they are meeting for June and July, unless you're going on vacation, show up. Even when it's hard, show up. I promise you it'll be worth it. Yeah. And then then number three, go ahead. You want me to do it? Yeah. Awesome. Experience life change. (laughs) You'll never fully experience all that the Springs has to offer until you are connected to a life group because that's where life change happens. That's where you get to... Know and be known. And something else within our groups and life changes, the beautiful thing is that our groups keep multiplying and they keep splitting. And you're like, ooh, church and split. Those two words should never go together unless we're talking about a life group because healthy life groups split to make room for more people because we're always looking for life group leaders and host homes and if we just stay together all the time our group has split three times it has been hard three times because you start really getting to know people and then some of them go to another group because they have to it's okay guess what I have more friends than I did with our first life group because we keep splitting just because we're not in a life group anymore doesn't mean we're not friends anymore sorry Heather we're not in a life group anymore we can't be friends it's not like that at all. A healthy, a healthy life group will split and grow. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And so, like, we like to just share that at the front end uh, so that nobody's surprised when that time comes to multiply your group. It's why we have apprentices, right? We want to make more capacity for new people. And so we're always wanting to grow. We're always wanting to multiply those groups, okay? So we want to ex- invite you in this morning to experience a life group. And I want to invite uh, Star to come and, and play softly for us now as we get ready to enter into our prayer time. But I want to invite you in, basically, to participate in a, in a life group, okay? So maybe you're here today and, and you're already connected. Well, praise God. In, let's encourage somebody else to get connected. Or maybe you're here today and you're thinking about it and, you're, and God may be encouraging you and nudging you to get involved. I want you to be obedient to God. I want you to, I want you to take your next step in your relationship with him and in your relationship with your church. And get plugged in and experience a life change. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, let's let's all stand together, please. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your encouragement. Thank you for your body of believers. Thank you, Lord, that we can connect in small groups. And I pray, Lord, for all of my brothers and sisters and even our guests and visitors who may be here for the first time. I pray, Lord, that you would speak to their hearts and, Lord, that you would help them to find exactly the group that they need to plug into so that they may be encouraged, so that they may find strength in the good times and in the bad times. Lord, that they may find support and help in their time of need, God. So we thank you for this life group ministry. We thank you, Lord, for all the leaders. We thank you, Lord, for all the apprentices. We thank you, Lord, for all the hosts' homes. 
And we pray your special blessings upon them today, Lord. Bless them uh, immensely in every single way. Meet every need that they may have in their lives, God. And Lord, more than anything, we want you to be glorified. We want you to receive all the praise and all the glory for what you do in and through your local church here. Lord, we vow to give you the glory. It's in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. 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 Can Can we just praise the Lord today?